<laughs> oh, look, we turned. <laughs> I spun you. <laughs> oh, stop it. Hey, Maniacs. Hey, Mystery Maniacs. Yes. Mystery Maniacs is a comedy recap podcast dedicated to mystery TV. Each week we dig into an episode of the show, including the murders, the maidem, the murders, the mayhem, the loonies, and everything else we love. This week, Poirot, the third floor flat, which is hard to say, the third floor flat. You end up saying third floor flat. (laughs) It's the third floor flat, eh? Eh? That's the Canadian version of it. I was watching a hockey game and then this pry rot came on and it is just after four flat, eh? <laughs> Season one, episode five. I'm Mark. I'm Sarah. <laughs> We're getting really close to our 200th episode. Yes. If you, if you don't count remixes and stuff. Well, who knows how to actually count it. But. We're going to be doing it. An official 200th episode sometime in April. We haven't chosen the official date, but we'll let you know way in advance. And, and <laughs> it can't be way in advance. It's like the next few weeks. Oh, gosh. <laughs> time, time, time moves it's, on. It goes so fast. We it's have not fair. three children graduating in five weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> From college in five weeks. Oh, and we don't know what any of them are going to do after no. graduation. Or even if they want to party for graduation. No. They haven't even decided no. that. No. 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 I, who knows what lies in store for us? What we're going to do, this is how I envision it. For we're, our 200th for episode? For our 200th episode, we're going to do a live episode. And it's going to be like tea with Mark and Sarah where you get to ask questions. Yes. And I'm going to put a form in the... In the newsletter that you can send questions in, you can. I'm going to put a, a note on the subreddit that you can put questions in. I'm going. You can mail questions to our email address. Yep, which is Mystery Maniacs Podcast. You can tweet at gmail.com. Us, tweet us questions. You can send them via smoke signals, and we're gonna. It'll be saved. So if you can't watch it live, you can still get your question answered. And questions could be anything from why the heck do you two do this to, you know, what is Poirot's middle name? I mean, you know, you can stump the nerds if you want to ask us difficult questions about mysteries. Or you can ask us questions about us or the show or other fans. Ask maybe we'll, maniacs maybe we'll, anything. Maybe we'll dish some dirt. I don't know. <laughs> we, we, we have very little dirt, but we do have some. It's good dirt that we have. Yes. Anyway. Yes, it It'll is. be fun, I think. Yes. So The that, worst thing is if we don't get any questions. <laughs> it's okay. I feel like nobody cares. I can make up an hour worth of questions. You're going to make up questions? Mary from Maryland says... <laughs> What are Mark's favorite type of socks? Well, Mary. <laughs> I can make up questions. <laughs> uh, and we'll have a live chat and all that good stuff. And So start sending questions. Yes. There, and, you know, there are no bad ones. So the other thing that I did this week is I, I made a little reel mm-hmm. that I sent out on all the video reel services. Mm-hmm. Uh, though not on TikTok. We're not on the TikTok. No. Not on Tiki Talk. Um, we don't know if it'll be around. So. Oh, that's yeah. true. Saying what we were currently watching. And, and boy, did people respond. People liked, pe- a lot of people watched it, but yeah. even better, a lot of people replied to it with mm-hmm. what they were watching. So if you're currently sort of stuck between things to watch or you want some recommendations from your fellow maniacs, the replies to that post are chock a block with good chock recommendations. A block. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And lots of hockey fans, apparently. Yeah. So, because I made a hockey joke in the reel. Yeah. It's 11 games now, folks, <laughs> till the postseason and the sadness begins. Yeah. <laughs> Mark's tone will change quite a bit. Mm. Uh, we're doing all Poirot in April, including two remix episodes on the 8th and the 15th because we covered them already. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we'll finish off season one on May 8th. And then we're we're moving forward in Poirot. Yeah, I think we'll just do season two. Everybody seems to like it. Yeah, everybody seems to like Poirot. So we'll just keep going. 
But uh, we will be taking time off in May because I'll be going to Canada. And the Yet kids again. will be graduating. The and, uh, children will be graduating and parties. Uh, rigmarole. Rigmarole. Are Originally. You, you ready to talk about the third floor flat? The third floor flat <laughs> was broadcast on the 5th of February. I don't think we've ever said turd so many times in a podcast. I, I can't slip into my Canadian. I don't think we should. I can't, I can't slip into my Canadian accent. No. This early. No. It's bad enough when I come home. Yes. <laughs> so the 5th of February, 1989, directed by Edward Bennett and written by Michael Baker. I'm going to say this is the best directed episode of season one. It's very good. There are some, there are some very nice shots here. He does a very good job. Of using the stairway, especially. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, most of the episode takes place in the apartment building. They go to a play and there's some shots on the street, but otherwise it's within three apartments and a stairway and a dumb waiter. Yeah, that's kind of that's it. That's it. It's very claustrophobic, but good in that yeah, way. Yeah, I agree. Oh, Poirot, he has a cold. I also know about this. I was going to say, the way he's feeling is the way you and I were feeling two weeks oh ago. Oh, my gosh. Uh, this head over the bowl, just for us, it would be some Vicks in there I with had some the, hot water. We figured out that I had the worst sinus infection I may have ever had in my life. Your head was basically rotting from the inside <laughs> out. <laughs> not good. Now you've I'm got some still, antibiotics, you're better. I'm still on these antibiotics that are like horse pills. They are. <laughs> I am jealous, though, that they have a, a tea trolley out on the street. So this, I would love to be able to walk out of the building where I work or live and get a good cup of tea. This episode, I, I love the writing of it, too, because this is really the story of the tea trolley. They are the real victims. That husband yeah. and wife that own that tea trolley are the real victims and, of this episode. And after the play, there's a fancy man at the tea trolley. What are you doing <laughs> drinking tea at 1030 at night? Why not? Oh. Uh, you never go to sleep. You get a cup of tea, though. It'd be so great. Not some oat milk, matcha, lavender, almond concoction. Just a good cup of tea. It'd be so nice. I, I bet you she serves bacon buddies, too. Oh, I bet you she serves a bacon A greasy buddies. breakfast sandwich. Mm, mm. Bacon buddy. We're hungry. <laughs> Is there no tradesman entrance at Whitehall Mansions? No. So Bishop's moving trucks. I'm are sorry. Out. Is it Whitehaven or Whitehall? It's Whitehaven. Thank you. Whitehall is where the government is. No. Yeah. And uh, the comedian, Jack Whitehall. Yes. Um, Bishop's moving trucks are out front. They're from 12 Belgravia Road, London, SW1. So they're local movers. Mm-hmm. And this is an actual building called Florin Court. You can go there. Yeah. And we, if you've been to Florin Court, because you're Poirot maniacs. <laughs> if you have, if you have a picture, a picture of you standing in front of that building, we want it. <laughs> that, that would be brilliant. It's a gorgeous building. But I, there, I noticed that there is 6-9 in metal letters and these beautiful Art Deco font. On, on both the sides front, of the stairs. Yeah. Both sides of the stairs. And I wondered if they added that, but I looked on Google Maps and that six and nine is still there. Mm, okay. so, so it's number six through nine yeah. is the, the address of the building. Yes. It's absolutely still a gorgeous building. That doorman is can about you, to get into fisticuffs with the removal men, though. Can you imagine? Watch that paint. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine how much money it, it costs to stay there uh, in Florin Court? Oh. I want to know how Pat... And Ernestine have enough money to have an apartment there. I understand why Poirot can afford it. So in the space of a week while covering this episode, we, Sarah and I, have got this episode mixed up with the third floor flat, the cheap flat, and the three girls. The third, third girl. girl. Yeah. Because they're all the kind of the same. <laughs> <laughs> they all have to do with an apartment in a complex of apartments that maybe has a second entrance, like a back door. With young women who yes. are, you know. It's certainly also that between 30s and 60s, British young women living alone uh, for the first time mm -hmm. vibe to it. Pat and Mildred giggle way too much. I think they're drunk at first. <laughs> they might be on some. Dancing is not that funny. They're having a time. 
If these two were in my house giggling like that, we'd have a talk. Be like, you two are annoying. Stop it. <laughs> oh, look, we turned. <laughs> I spun you. <laughs> oh, stop it. So they're in 36B. <laughs> right. The girl, uh, the new lady. Ernestine. Is in 46B. No. Okay. She's so in 36. She's they're in 36. In 46. They're in 46B. Ernestine's at the bottom. Pat's in the middle. Poro's at the top. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's why their music bothers her. But but that's not really why. She, well, she, but she can hear their music. Yes. Because they're above her. So it should bother Poirot too. Yes. Because he's above them. Yes. Did you notice among Pat's luxurious furniture that she has a robot butler? Uh, you pointed it out to me and then you showed me a picture of it. <laughs> and I'm still kind of stunned that there's a robo butler. There. <laughs> there is a robot butler. Boy, in her living room. is there a lot of like robo butlers carrying a lot of fruit. He's carrying a tray of fruit. He has metal hands. And it looks like real fruit. Yes. Like it's not waxy fruit. Who does that? I Who keeps know. fruit on a tray like that? Like that's a lot of fruit for anybody to eat before it goes bad. Yeah. Wouldn't you have like fruit flies around it? Like oh, bananas and All grapes? these people have staff. I don't know. When I saw... <laughs> <laughs> they don't all snore like Trotter does. When I, when I saw her robo butler and the fruit, I was like, I'm going to pause the show and go get some grapes. There's no robot butler to bring them to me. No, we have no robot butler. The reason why I noticed it is there's a shot of Pat and Mildred dancing, and I saw this silver hand. I'm like, what the heck is that? Yeah. And then I backed up like 10 seconds and said, whoa, there's a robot butler. <laughs> he has a metal head. He has metal hands. And a big tray of fruit. And a big tray of fruit that he's laboring under. <laughs> yes. Well, he's, he's like three feet tall. Uh, we're nerds. Yep. Poirot leaves Whitehaven Mansions to go put some letters in the mail. And he's so bundled up that he looks like in a cartoon where three kids stack up on top of each other and put a trench yes. coat on. <laughs> <laughs> to look like an adult, that's and, what he looks like. And Poirot is doing the Mr. Sick. He's yeah. doing the, oh. the end is near. It's only been three weeks since your last case. Oh, He does the sneezing really well. He's a, David Suchet is a very good sneezer. He's a good sneezer. <laughs> Even this, the one, before he leaves the apartment to go to the play, he's in the mirror and he's yeah. like, ha, ha, ha. Oh, doesn't sneeze. Yeah. And then he walks out a shot. A Joe! Yes. <laughs> So Mr. Brown Shoes arrives, mm -hmm. and we get, oh, it's you, the killer. Yes, of course <laughs> it's the killer. So then we know at least it's a man who's going to kill Ernestine. Yes. Played. I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. I was not aware of this, but everybody in London must go to the same play every night. Well, wait a minute. Ernestine's played by Josie Lawrence, a.k.a. Cat Lady. Yes. For Midsummer. Yes. Recent Midsummer. Recent Midsummer Cat Lady. Not only is she in Midsummer, but so is Pat. Pat is in, played by Suzanne Burden, is in two Midsummers. She's yeah. in Talent for Life and The Great and the Good. Yeah. Donovan, a.k.a. The Killer. We should have said, this is a spoiler podcast if you're new. Oh, yes. We're going to ruin it. Donovan yeah. did it. Donovan did it. Donovan, played by Nicholas Pritchard, is in Two Midsummers. He's wow. in Birds of Prey and Death and Dust. And Trotter, the maid, played by Susan Porritt, is in Death and Dreams. Oh, wow. So it's, there's a ton of overlap with Midsummer. It's done a, in, in the weirdness that is our life, this week I... Did a collaboration search for Taskmaster, Taskmaster, and Midsummer, and Midsummer to see that there had been four people from Midsummer on yeah. Taskmaster. Yeah. Okay. So yes, they all go to the same theater. My impression is that this theater is within walking distance of Whitehaven Mansion. They go to see the Deadly Shroud at Wyndham's Theater. Hastings is awesome. Yes. Poirot is his friend. He's depressed. He's sick, and Hastings knows. How to fix it. I've got a solution, something that will make you happy. I've got two tickets to the Deadly Shroud. Poirot's like, oh, I don't know. I'm too sick. I'm going to die. He's like, bet you can't figure out who did it. Yep. Ten quid. Yeah. All of a sudden, he perks up. But well, you know, it's not the money. It's not the money. His disease is almost <laughs> gone right away yes. after that. <laughs> He's like instantly healed. Hastings says something here about the birds running. And Poirot's like... 
Birds do not run. You should have paid more attention in your biology lesson. Oh, Hastings says his car is running like a bird. Running like a bird. Yeah. How fast do birds run? It depends what kind of bird. An oh. emu can run really fast. An ostrich can get up to. Can Can you guess how much an ostrich can get up to? 40 miles an hour. It can sprint at 43 miles an hour. Oh, I was close. Yeah. Is that is that faster than Hastings' car can go? I think it's pretty dark. No, no, no. Well, Remember, because a couple episodes ago, uh, oh, he went, he's 90 on the hogsback. Yes. <laughs> going out to the Waverleys, he is going real fast. So a uh, bird could, in fact, not beat Hastings in his no, car. No, but pretty close. I was impressed. This play is something else. This pl- th- This is... Christy making fun of Christy, Mm -hmm. which is fantastic. It's like the mouse trap, you know. (laughs) I just love help her, someone. (laughs) She's dead. Like it's your mother, and she just dropped dead, and you're and you just stand back and go help her, someone. (laughs) And Poirot is like, oh, clearly it was the sherry that killed her. And this is my guess. He he makes his little guess and gives it to him. To Hastings. It must be so weird for the actors playing the characters in the play to be actors in a play in a show. You know, it's very like eat meta Russian doll deep. Again, there is so much production in this first season. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah. I wonder if there was a similar kind of drawing room play that they could just use the set of and Yeah. But when when the detective arrives inspector flint yes he's got the the trench coat on and he's like i brought you all here obviously today. it must be her yeah and but he was like what but he walks through his old well at first i thought this yeah. person did it but then you know he has to give the complete explanation as of his someone logic. said if poirot's gathering everyone in the library shit's about to go down yeah exactly <laughs> and you're the killer don't go no that means run while they're meeting in the library, you run. Poirot is mad. And again, this is Christy making fun of herself and making fun of other kind of golden age writers. He says, well, we weren't given all the facts. Yes. Right? Which is one of those rules that the um, mystery writers of her time agreed. And this That story- the reader has to have an equal chance of solving the mystery as the detective. And this story is an example of that. We find out that Ernestine is a missus, not a miss. Mm-hmm. Early on, we we fu- the only thing we don't find out is that Donovan has another name. Yeah. And I think they do a great job. The other thing that happens here is something that Christy does where she takes a scene from a short story and then uses it again in novels or other short stories. And this scene is Poirot and Hastings are out and about in town and they see a beautiful woman. They say, oh, look at that beautiful woman. I know her. Yes. Mm -hmm. It happens in the third floor flat. It happens in the third girl. It happens in the cheap flat. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it happens even in... Um, uh, Lord sto- Edgewater dies. Edgeware. It even happens in stories Lord where... Lord Tupperware dies. Where Poirot is traveling, he'll see somebody who he knows, right? At the same resort or whatever. Couple of things. Can can we talk about the coal lift? So, the dumb waiter. So this is... <laughs> this is a thing that I wish we had. <laughs> <laughs> where would it go? I don't know. <laughs> But you're supposed to move your trash and or your coal in this dumbwaiter thing. Built in to the kitchen of every unit in Whitehaven Mansions is door access to a dumbwaiter that is used to deliver coal to the apartments and to take the dustbin away, the trash can away. But, okay, so I have a question. So Poirot's dust... I have many questions about it. (laughs) Poirot's dustbin is full. Mm -hmm. Does Miss Lemon then put it in this thing and squeak it down? Squeak, 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 squeak. And then take the elevator downstairs. Mm -hmm. Take it out. And dump it into the bigger can. Dump it into the bigger can and then put the empty can back in. I don't think it would be in Miss Lemon's duties to take care of his trash. You said Miss Lemon's duty. You got turned four flat on the brain now. I mean, she's kind enough to take care of him when he's sick, but within limit, right? Is Poirot going to do this? Yeah, I think he would. No. He cooks for himself. I bet he has Hastings. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I think 
Poirot might be a little bit too proud to have other people handling his trash. I don't know. And who who can have a bucket as a trash can? Yeah. Like, we recycle and we have more trash than that. So the other thing. But is, who's, yeah, but you're right. There should be a guy who basically lives in the basement. <laughs> the troll in Poirot's basement. The garbage troll who lives in the basement. The coal troll. <laughs> whose job it is to dump the buckets out whenever they happen to arrive. Oh, Mr. Poirot. <laughs> You what? got some coal! <laughs> Wait a minute, what accent is that? I have no idea! <laughs> because next to the dumbwaiter in the basement later is the nastiest can of trash. Well- it's bad, and there's like that there's basement like banana, is hell. There's like banana peels hanging there's out. Like, like it would reek, and there are like five of those doors, and it would reek, and it would reek into your apartment. Yeah, it would go right up. The stink would go right up the shaft. And, <laughs> and okay, which I'm, tells me that tenants don't go to the basement to empty the bins. No. Then okay, so. I'm two dudes, and I realize pulleys save work, okay? Yes. But we're pulling, like, let's be honest. It's 300 pounds. That up four floors. Up four floors, and you have to hold it. Plus the basement, yeah, because it wants to go down. Yeah, right? so like, oh, let me open the door. You hold it there, yeah. dude. <laughs> Tight to support really both like of our weights. I'm a girl, but I'll do it anyway. We're heavier than a dustbin. Yeah. And like, how do you know your coal is about to be delivered? Like, do the you- The coal troll calls up. <laughs> like, do you like yank the rope and go, coal troll, I need some coal. And then he's like, okay. And he puts it on the bucket and sends it up. Okay. It is 1939. They have a telephone. They might telephone. <laughs> oh, no. The troll's not allowed to use the phone. Come on. <laughs> He he probably taps on the wall and the concierge interprets his taps and it's then calls. Oh, you call it ready. <laughs> it's Quasimodo living down there. <laughs> it's not a tenant friendly basement. Poirot does not no. go down there. That other man hid in the other stuff. <laughs> If the coal troll was there, he would solve the crime instantly. He would be the best witness. <laughs> so when I was researching for this episode, I thought, I wonder if anybody's ever used a dumbwaiter like this to break into an apartment. Yeah. You know, like, has there been crimes using dumbwaiters? And unfortunately, all the ones I could find were of people being killed by dumbwaiters no. and accidentally, right? Like any other kind of elevator accident. Like 300 pounds coming down on your head. I know we've jumped way to the end here. We'll go back. Don't worry. We know. We haven't actually talked about the murder yet, but we're talking about the getaway. We'll get there. But when Donovan is in that shaft, all I can think about is, what if somebody has trash? He's in trouble because it's coming down. Because it's not under, it's not below him. Well, you got to pull it up. It's got to be above him. Yeah. I don't know. Can they have something that sophisticated, that convenient, and not have it mechanized in some way? Yeah. If they know how to work the elevator, they should have a button where you press and the dumbwaiter shows up. Yeah. And for all we know, there is a button, right, in the in the apartments. But that's not what they're trying to do because they're like, but if, if there was, though, they couldn't override it like that by pulling Col- it. Coal th- troll doesn't need no button. Well... <laughs> I know what the coal. This is like the fifth accent for the coal. <laughs> what coal, what coal troll uses, what garbage monster in the basement uses, is that giant chain and pulley just hanging in the middle Why of the basement. Is there a giant chain and pulley. Is that like where Poirot keeps <laughs> and interrogates subjects? <laughs> no, it's what the garbage troll has to use to pick up that giant nasty bin of grossness. <laughs> It's got a banana peel in it. <laughs> it's filled with a thousand tiny buckets of garbage. Okay, let's go back because we haven't even found the body uh, yet. We have so screwed up here. Yes. <laughs> so they make the bet about the play. Yeah. And we looked into it. The 10 pounds that they bet in today's money would be over $800. Which is a lot to bet on something. It's a considerable bet. And I think it has to be a considerable amount or Poirot would have dismissed it. Yes. Because it's not that he's 
greedy for money or that he's tight. It's that Hastings has that much confidence well, in his bet that now, he's willing to bet that much. In the much. later episode where he's $40, uh, 40 pounds overdrawn, I'm like, dude, you need a Relax. loan. You just, need a loan. Yeah, just chill out. That would be like $2,500 difference yeah. in his account. No wonder he's pissed. Yeah. So Pat doesn't have her key. No. So the boys decide to go ride the dumbwaiter because scaling the outside of the apartment seems a little crazy. <laughs> I guess in the story, there's a whole discussion that the building is actually only five stories high and it's weird that there's no fire escape on a five-story high building and all this weirdness. Well, why do you need a fire escape when you have the dumbwaiter? <laughs> you just hop in and ride down. Come on, troll girl. I'll, I'll save you. <laughs> the, the garbage man will keep you safe. He'd have to be down there 24-7. Oh, right? He's got a little bed and everything. Otherwise, he's got, what, four dumbwaiters to monitor? When you when you called the dumbwaiter, it would have all those other people's trash in it. It would. It would he's, be nasty. He's got to be working. He's got to be working down there all the time. Oh, that's the real mystery of this episode. The T people are the real victims. Yep. And the real mystery is who empties the dumbwaiter. Well, we know who empties it, but why are we not showing the Where troll Where is he? Where is the? Is he, have, he has the night off. Where is the troll? The coal troll. <laughs> wow, it's hard to say. <laughs> So the boys get in the dumbwaiter to sneak into the back door of, of the dumbwaiter door the, and the of Pat's apartment. The ladies sing a song. Which Maybe. is such an earworm. It is. I prepared myself. I knew it, yeah. I was going to be humming Life is Just a Bowl of Cherries for a week. Released in 1931, so totally would be. It's contemporary. Yep. <sighs> But they just sit, they, they have no care for how many people they annoy with their noise. Those two. Okay, that is the squeakiest thing. Can you imagine? So it's like 1030 at night. There's got to be people in this building in bed. Yes. Well, like the maid. Yes. <laughs> and somebody needs some coal. And the coal troll loads it up and, and it would go by everybody's house. By everybody's kitchen. But the shots, like the cameraman worked hard in this episode mm -hmm. because he's he's got to shoot down the stairs and get the second floor and the third floor. Never get, mind the shaft work. Yeah, the shaft work. and The big uh, elevator, the yeah, dumb waiter, yeah, up, uh, down. Yeah. And the shot we'll talk about in a little bit where Pat is definitely going to die. Yes. So, so there's a lot of a lot of that kind of work that happens, but I love Poirot and Hastings sticking their head in the coal chute. <laughs> yeah, because they could be beheaded. I yes. just I read a story about a woman who was beheaded yes. by a dumb waiter just five years ago. So no. they're taking their lives into their own hands. So they can't. Though they probably would hear it coming. <laughs> They can't turn on the light in the kitchen, so they have to go in the rest of the apartment. And then they recognize they're in the wrong apartment. Okay. Which is a total... No. Look. No. Back up. Oh. Jimmy's a moron. Okay. Well, okay. Yes, Jimmy is a because moron. Because Donovan is purposely taking them to the third floor instead of the fourth floor. Yes. Right? Yes. And Jimmy's too dumb to know that they've only gone up three floors. Yeah. Wouldn't you be counting the doors to make I, sure that like, you got to the I right one? Be. And I would think if you designed this building, well, no, I was going to say that there'd be like numbers next to the doors. And no the, one and else the shaft, is riding but the nobody thing else except is in there. for the coal troll. For that matter, how does the coal troll know when he's got the lift up to the right floor? You would, the, the, the actual way this would happen is you would mark the rope. And hope that it didn't rub off in some way? I, <laughs> we have spent a lot of time... <laughs> On this dumb way. <laughs> because it's the whole crux of yeah, the episode. It's the whole crux. If like, you take it away, it can't happen. None of it can like happen. Like the other episode, which I think is the cheap flat, which has the back stairs where they put out their trash and the little door. The smelly stairs. The smelly stairs. Yeah. Makes more sense than this crazy dumb way. <laughs> yes. It's so convenient, but so mysterious. It's, there's so many <laughs> details about the, the way that it would work that I just can't wrap my brain around. Yes. I mean, I know how a dumbwaiter works. I just don't know the logistics of how this thing is, how it provides its service, I yes. guess. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Do you tip the trash man? Do you, Cultural likes tip. Like, what is uh, he like? Garbage? Like, stinky no, garbage make troll. He, go, he troll goes guy. outside to the tea truck and gets some tea. <laughs> He's the fancy guy. No. 
<laughs> the fancy guy you see late at night getting tea. That's why he's not in the basement. Boy, is he fancy. He's got the whole nine yards and the top hat on. I know. Wow. Cultural Troll is cleans having up. a night out. <laughs> Cultural cleans up. That explains. Now we know where he is. He's on his night off. He cleans up good. Oh, the name of the episode is Cold Troll's Big Night Out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he ever gets in the dumb waiter and just pulls uh, himself up to listen in on people? He does. Just to listen in on what's of going on. Of course he does. Does Miss Lemon send him cookies? Oh, maybe? I'm sure she does. Wow. He cleans up. That's what we're missing. She comes in Monday morning to give Poirot his his liquid medicine, and she goes, "Did you see the coal troll?" <laughs> he was. We went out on Friday night. Him and I. <laughs> Poirot hasn't even been to bed yet. Oh. Okay, Trotter sure can sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so Trotter is the maid the maid and she is sleeping through this entire process i love that the boys laugh at that before yeah and like that's like it makes them feel like they're like oh we were in the wrong place but they're also toffs right so they're not actually scared about being in the wrong apartment no 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 they know if they get caught (laughs) they'll just be like oh (laughs) we have lots of money we don't get in trouble (laughs) we'll just get back in the garbage waiter and leave sorry bye (laughs) you know (laughs) no they just go out the front door yeah that's true they just do what they want (laughs) so and they find the dead body Mm -hmm. now the killer is acting here. Yes. And he he's almo- an actor acting like he's acting. He almost <laughs> leaves. Mm-hmm. And Jimmy notices it. What if Jimmy doesn't notice her? It doesn't matter. That's not why they're there. They're there because Donovan wants to get the letter. That's right. He doesn't care if they ever find the body. That's right. If he was if if the letter wasn't being delivered by the last post, they wouldn't he wouldn't have gone into the apartment. And they wouldn't have found her until the next day. I also got this episode mixed up with some other detective show that we've watched where the body is moved to be closer to the window so the time of death is wrong. But that doesn't happen in this episode. No. But my notes are full of, well, they moved the body to change the time. No, no, they didn't. Never mind that Ernestine has just moved in today. Okay. And she's getting mail. Okay. How does that work? She has phone service. Several mail she's deliveries got, a day. She's got no, no phone mail? service. Phone service, I get okay because phone service at this time is by address. So you'd say like White Haven's thirty six B, and so then so when you moved, you didn't take your number with you. They just kept the phone service on. Whatever. She's got post twice. Yeah, she's got telephone service. She's got Wi Fi. She's got, like, she's all set up already. Garbage troll already knows how to deliver her call. takes 15 weeks normally. Yes. So she's already getting mail. We've already talked about how does several post deliveries a day work. Yes. She gets post all the way to 9 p.m. at night. (laughs) Of course, we get Amazon packages. (laughs) Sometimes. So he doesn't care if they find her or not. He just wants to get the letter off the table. Yes. Which luckily Trotter has put on the table because when they talk to her, she says she picks up the post as she's going out. Yeah. And when she comes back, she she puts it on the table. She is. So she could have very much have been out with that letter on her person. She is the most unobservant maid ever. There's been a murder in this apartment and her mistress is dead. And she needs to like she went out with the coal troll. To the show. <laughs> come back and she's got to get to bed and get snoring right away. She doesn't She doesn't go in the kitchen and try to turn on the no. light because she would have found that it didn't work. No. Um, I give her not noticing the blood on the table since Ernestine has the worst taste and has a blood uh, red tablecloth on her table. Well, she's wiping that one glass. Why are you not unpacking? <laughs> <laughs> she's getting the drinks trolley ready. It's priority. And we're supposed to believe that the only thing she could have seen was maybe Ernestine's feet. Maybe. And she would have had to turn on all the lights to see. Uh, Still, she's the world's most unobservant maid. Who gives their maid the night off on the day that you move in? Like, that's the day I need you. You have unpacking to do, lady. Yeah. That's because she knows her. Oh, it's you is coming by. Yes. 
I love that Jap says to Poirot, you'll be having murders in your back bedroom next. <laughs> so they find the dead body. Poirot goes, yep, that's a dead body. Mm-hmm. Calls Jap and Jap shows up. This is one of those where they have good rapport, where mm-hmm. Jap isn't threatened by Poirot, though Donovan has put down fake clues, right? We've yeah. got the letter, the handkerchief. Yeah. Hey, you know, the fact that we don't have monogrammed handkerchiefs anymore must really fury- infuriate the police because yeah. they were so convenient. It I mean, also, DNA, shmiene, embroidered handkerchiefs. It also infuriates me that they refer to the letter being signed at least twice by Jack Frazier mm-hmm. when it's just signed by Frazier. John Frazier no. is what Jap assumes, doesn't yeah. he? No, he, he assumes it's... That just it's, the most common J name. It, yeah, but it's just Frazier on mm-hmm. the letter. Yeah, but it's JF on the handkerchief. Yeah. But they say it was signed by Fra- Jack Fraser, John Fraser, or whatever. It is. Yeah. I'm like, no, it wasn't. I looked. <laughs> it was signed by a Fraser. The JF could be Jingleheimer Frodinger. Poirot opens the door. It could be the garbage troll's handkerchief. <laughs> Poirot opens the door and shines the light right in the face of the maid. <laughs> and then says, well, let her sleep. Like, may- maybe you should shut the door and then knock on it. Yeah. And wake her up. Maybe. Because otherwise she's going to be awoken to an apartment full of men. <laughs> and saying there's been a murder. Yeah. I think he could have gently knocked and woke her up. I love, so I I love quest- his smoking jacket, by the way. I have a question for you here. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's important it's that beautiful. Poirot changes his clothes like six times. No, just stuff. his jacket. Yeah. He still has his shirt and tie on. Poirot figures this out long before anybody. Oh, yeah. And long before he says he's figured it out. Yeah. And he's told Hastings. Some, something. Because. Or Hastings is kind of smart in this episode and picks up on something. With, when when he puts the, the so he puts, he puts the blue bottle up to his nose and says, I can't smell this because I have a cold. Mm-hmm. And the other guy just takes off the lid and yeah. smells it. Um. What do they do? They search. Oh, they search him for the key. And the letter. And the letter. And Hastings would have seen that. Yes. He would have seen Poirot take something out of Donovan's pocket. So they both know then. Mm. But I think Poirot figures it out while he's getting fed. Yeah, I do too. While Pat's making him an egg. Yeah. The most un-Poirot egg ever. And He eats toast. It's a whole piece of bread. He doesn't do that. He no. eats little squares. He eats little squares of toast. And- Put an apron on, lady. Like, I know you're nice and everything, but... She's got an evening gown she's on. She's cooking in her evening gown on the cooker. And it's satin. A little grease. Yeah. Ruined. Just ruined. ruined. Right away. When <laughs> when Jap is leaving and Poirot wants to go back into the apartment, Jap kind of dismisses it. Like, well, we, we, yeah, we know who did it. It's fine. We just got to find him, whatever. And Poirot does those little puppy dog eyes. Like, yep. well, if you say so, okay. Yep. And Jap's, Jap's like, like oh, I'll do what you want. Because <laughs> Jap knows then. Jap knows like he's You're like, on to something. Yeah, whatever. I'm wrong. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> then we have. Uh, okay. I need to tell people about this. Yes. I really hate heights. Like even in movies or TV shows, if they pan the camera over the ledge, I feel like I'm going to throw up. Yes. Like it just, I can't handle it. Yep. And Pat is sitting in the window. The top pane of the window is open. We know she's on the fourth floor. No, she's not actually in the fourth floor here. I know. Because there's a camera. Yes. Unless they've got it on a crane. Yes. Never mind that this window doesn't look anything like the windows on the front of the building where her apartment must face. Anyway, she's sitting on the window ledge on the cell, top window open. Her arm is almost out of the window. Yes. And... And the the bars of the window that separate the glass look like you could just push them and break them. Well, the, like they're pencil thin. They're and like she's putting, made of balsa wood. And she's putting her weight on it. <laughs> and I'm like, dude is the killer. You're falling out a wind. Like, yeah. you're, you're on the fourth. You're, you're going to die. <laughs> you're having such a lovely evening. And then you killed your wife. Push. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it would take no effort. 
It made me so uptight. I'm like, I'm going to look away until I hear them stop talking because I can't handle the fact that she's about to fall out that window and it's so stupid to be sitting there. Okay, it's over. All right. We have to make a cultural t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're you're really limiting him to only one part of his duties. Oh, I know. He's he, also He's a garbage. very busy dude. <laughs> he's coal and dust troll. Yes. Jeez. The tea lady is shocked. She just moved in today. She's got her husband there. They're packing up the tea caddy, tea shed, yep. trolley. The, 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 <laughs> the tea, tea trolley the, the is... The tea shack. I don't the, the tea trolley is the chorus, Yes, right? yeah. It's the chorus of They're the story. They're the background. Yeah. Yeah, filling in the gaps. What a shame. She just moved in today. How shocking. Yeah. They've got a little lantern. They're because so the maid is like, can I go stay at my sister's yeah. place? <laughs> can I get out of here now? <laughs> I just woke up from a really deep sleep to find a bunch of strangers in the apartment that I just moved into, and my employer is dead. Get me out of here. Who cares? Where does Poirot get this bottle of ether? Uh, he carries around ether all the time. Does he just keep it in his smoking jacket, yeah, do you think? Yeah, he does. Maybe that's his ether jacket. Every once in a while, you know. <laughs> his other smoking jacket is his strychnine jacket. <laughs> this is my dagger jacket. This is my... <laughs> I surmised correctly that I would need my ether jacket my tonight. <laughs> that's a that's like a robe. Yeah. You need a longer coat for yeah. a blunderbuss. And that's pretty potent stuff that he uncorks it and goes. And goes. Like Donovan the, takes a big whiff. The look the look on Hastings' face is like, whoa. <laughs> I love Poro goes, no, 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 no. Why did you take the lid off, stupid? <laughs> That is stupid. Speaking of the kitchen scene where Pat is going to ruin her dress, he says that Pat reminds him of a, an English girl he was in love with. Yeah, I had to stop at that point. In time We've never I heard never of that person. Never heard of anybody. And when he sees her in the bar at the play, he does get kind of a little wistful look in he his does. eye. Like, like she is something to him. And there is no mention of this woman anywhere. No. After. Now, I didn't look in the book to see if he says that in the book. But Hastings isn't in the story in the book. So yeah. I don't know who he would have said it to. But like, as far as I know, the only love he ever had was the Baroness. The Baroness. Yeah. Who's a jewel thief. Oh, we'll get there. So Donovan stole the key from Pat's purse. Yes. So that she wouldn't be able to get into the apartment. So they'd have to get in the dumbwaiter, go to the wrong apartment, and he could steal the letter. Yes. I think he's kind of hoping that they don't find the body, that Jimmy doesn't see the body. Yeah, I think so. That's the only reason why he has to even bother. Otherwise, it'd be smarter for him to not go there at all. So there's the whole blue bottle scene, and then there's the chase. Oh, the drama. Of the, is he on the elevator? Is he not on the, if he got on that elevator as his getaway, he is the dumbest criminal in the universe. And it is the, the slowest elevator. They do a great reveal of his hand. So he sets the elevator to go down mm -hmm. and then climbs the stairs. Which is a total trope that, of, let me start the elevator off and they'll chase the elevator. But he's not stupid. There are a lot of people in detective shows who, when they get chased, they get stupid. Mm -hmm. So then he goes down the uh, the dumbwaiter, but he's forgotten that it's the squeakiest dumbwaiter. Yes. Can they all hear him they going? They all hear him in the... To the basement! To the basement! But he gets out of one dumbwaiter and sneaks into the other one because the cultural has the night off. Yes. And Poirot... <laughs> Isn't there. I think Poirot might know he's there. Mm -hmm. He knows something's up. So, which proves something else, okay? So Poirot... At first I thought... Poirot has let the other two leave the basement and he's standing there because now that it's quiet, Donovan might think that he's gone too. Yeah. And come out. I thought so too. But Donovan isn't that stupid. No. So Poirot leaves. But that means there's no other way out of this basement. No. So the coal troll has to carry that foul garbage can up those stairs. To get it out of the building. Yes. Through the lobby. Watch the paint. <laughs> Because if there was a workman's entrance, they would have delivered her furniture that way. <laughs> there has to be a workman's entrance. There has to be. <laughs> <sighs> okay. So then he runs outside. 
He hides from Hastings. And On the the most abandoned street in all of London. Well, everybody's gone to tea trolleys after the play. No, the tea trolley's all packed up. Oh, that's right. Right? Yeah. It is late. Yeah. So if you think they get home from the play at like 10. Yeah. Right? This is like around midnight. This has got to be one o'clock in the morning, probably. Two o'clock, yeah. But I'm sorry. London has some people. Yeah. (laughs) There are millions of people. And who parks their car that doesn't need a key to start and is a convertible just on the street? Hastings Hastings. is begging somebody to take his car. (laughs) So he steals Hastings' car. Because it just has a push button start, apparently. And Hastings jumps out in front (laughs) and says, No! No! But what's he saying no to? No, don't get away, murderer. Or no, don't take my car. Stop or I'll say no again. (laughs) Please don't take my baby girl away. (gasps) Please don't crash her into the tea truck. Oh, no. My baby bird. Poor haste. I feel so bad for him. He says, hanging's too good for some people. Oh, the axle's broke. How hard did he hit the tea tr- and How sturdy is the tea trolley that it can know. break the front axle on your car? If it can do that, either your axle's made out of aluminum foil or that... Ugh. Or that tea trolley is made out of some stern stuff. Some stern stuff. Absolutely. Plus, the poor tea couple. That's their business. Yep. It's just gone. Yep. Hastings gets some sympathy, but when they come to work in the next morning, they're going to find... They're going to be like, what the heck happened? Their livelihood Go gone. Ask the troll. He'll tell you. <laughs> The troll is secretly a millionaire and will pay for a new trolley because he likes you. So he, he's, he's been, been picking money out of people's trash for years. They catch him and they take him upstairs. They don't take him to Scotland Yard, which they should. They take him upstairs and he confesses. But he's like, she made me do it. Dude, just because you got married in Switzerland doesn't mean nothing counts. Ernestine is awful. She is. But she, they deserve each she other. She moved into the apartment, okay, to purposely screw with his life. Now, she doesn't deserve to die for that. No. No, no, no. But she didn't have to move in. She no. could have lived anywhere and just, yeah. she knows where Pat lives. She yeah. could have just come by. Yes. And said, I'm his wife. Yes. I can prove it. Yes. She didn't have to move in. No. How can she afford to move in? I don't know. Maybe other things went on in Switzerland that we don't know about. What, like a bank robbery or something? Maybe. (laughs) Maybe Ernestine is independently wealthy. Maybe. Pat's independently wealthy, apparently. She doesn't have a job. She ain't got no job. So the other guy, not the killer. Jimmy. Jimmy. His friend. Oh, I love the long-haired woman. (laughs) <laughs> Poirot was like, use your advantage now that she's emotionally <laughs> unstable to take she, advantage of the situation. She needs you. Go to her. Yeah. That, I, that, I didn't like that. He should have said, when Jimmy said, she doesn't want me, she wanted him. Yeah. Poirot should have said, but right now what she wants is a friend. Yes. That's that what he should better. have said. And then he could have gone and comforted her as a friend. Never mind her girlfriend. But instead, it's like. No, I'm going to go over there and touch her bare skin as much as I can while I try to get her back into like the apartment. the girlfriend is completely forgotten about. Mildred disappears. Disappears. She's kind of useless anyway. Maybe she was in the tea trolley when it got hit. Maybe she ran off with the coal troll. Maybe. Hastings gets his 10 pounds, which, as you know now, is $843, which 43 pounds. Which, which would help out with the repairs. Quite a bit of money. Would help out with the repairs, and Poirot gets his friar's balsam. Which is a benzoine tincture. Is it like Vicks? No, it's more like, um, it would smell more like cedar. Okay. Benzoine is made from a resin from a tree. Okay. It's a family of trees called the Styrax, <laughs> which is not from Dr. Seuss. No. It's a real thing. Yep. This stuff is freaking amazing, though. Okay? Let me tell you about Friar's Balsam. Okay. Yes, you can put a few drops of it into steaming water like this, and it helps loosen congestion. It's actually very effective at that. I'll tell you that that week. (laughs) People also use it in their mouth to heal canker sores. Oh. And, like, mouth injuries. It's also used as an antiseptic on injuries. Oh, nice. But it's sticky. Okay? Like, because it's a resin. Yeah. 
So in the military, like in in the world wars, they used benzoine tincture to close wounds on battlefields. Oh, that makes sense. Because it would stick them together like like super glue. It's like the super glue that you use now. And even now, if you're somebody who has an allergy to bandage adhesives. Like me. They will put this tincture on your skin first and then put the bandage on and it helps it stick and protects you from the adhesive. Nice. Like We should get some. It's good stuff. The most amazing use of it is still... To this day, they use it in the military when you get blisters. So you get a you get a big blister, they drain it, you know, the the fluid comes out of it, and then that's when it starts to really hurt, you know? Yes. They put this stuff between the skin of the blister and your base skin. Oh, and it it sticks it down. And probably make sure it's moisturized too. And it heals instantly, basically. Oh, wow. It just sticks it yeah, down. Yeah, we need to get some of this stuff. It's, can we order some on the Amazons? And you can use it when you have a cold. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Yesterday was yesterday, and today is my T-son. <laughs> <laughs> because all you need to get over a virus is a mystery. That was my problem last week. I had no mystery. I should have just murdered somebody you and should've. said, look, it's a mystery. Why do we have a dumb waiter now? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you said you wish we had one. Like, we do have a two-story house, but, like, our basement is, like, a half-basement crawl space. Like, I... No. We could dump trash down there, but there'd be a problem after a while, I think. I, I'd end up cleaning it, so... <laughs> we do have something that's... We've never mentioned this. Our house is so weird. We have a weird house. When we bought our house, the people who lived here before had a good amount of money and did some renovations and got custom cabinets throughout the whole house. So yes. they're they're be- they're very dated. They're very 90s, but they're beautiful cabinets. Yeah. And in the kitchen, like you go around the kitchen island and then there's a laundry room, right? But so But there's in- a toaster box on the island. Right. And beside the toaster box is a little door. It's a wee door. Like a cabinet door <laughs> that you open up and see a coal troll. <laughs> <laughs> No, you see the washing machine. Like the laundry room is there. I think they had like a basket in there that you came down for breakfast and you threw your laundry in there. Which would save you 10 steps. Yes. At most. (laughs) Yes. But our (laughs) kitchen is annoying to move through. People are like, can we take some pictures of this kitchen? I don't understand. I will take a picture of the door and put it in the show notes. So now, so since we moved in, what, 15 years ago? Yeah. Because this little door, because anybody who comes to our house for the first time sees it, it and opens it. Intuitively, you open it because you need to know where it leads. And so for the longest time, we would put little pictures in there. Yeah, like memes. Yeah, like little funny memes. What's in there now? (laughs) I don't think there's anything in there now. Um, So that if you were nosy enough to open it, you'd see something that was like, well, you're nosy, aren't you? (laughs) I will take a picture of said door and put it in the show notes. (laughs) I'll take a picture of you with your head in the door from the other (laughs) side. I don't know if I can get my head. (laughs) But that's our dumb waiter right there. Yes. That's where that our, our, our personal dumb waiter. Our cold troll would have to live on the other side of the door in the laundry room. Wow. <laughs> he wouldn't be very How mysterious. How many times have we said cold troll? <laughs> Way more than I thought we would oh. when we started. Wow. So Best Corpse is obviously Ernestine. She's the only and one. And she does a good job getting shot, too. She does. And His she, little pop gun is the quietest gun. He pew, 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 pew. Yeah. Um, so after the credits, do yeah. Pat and Jimmy get together? I want him to get together with the other girl. Mildred? Yeah, I think she's, I think Pat's going to have like lots of suitors. Okay, but Mildred flaked out. Yeah. We don't even know where she went. She's not much of a friend. I have two questions. What happens to the tea trolley people and what happens to the coal troll? (laughs) That's all you want to know. That's all I want to know. The cold troll to me now is like Phantom of the Opera. Yes. Like he puts on his beautiful tux and goes out for the night on his one night a month when he's allowed to be handsome. And then he goes back to the basement and becomes Quasimodo again. (laughs) (laughs) Like his fairy godmother gives him one night a month. You have tuned in to some fine podcasting. (laughs) 
Remember, this is about Poirot that we're talking about. Okay. So the tea couple, you think they have insurance on their trip? I hope so. If not, the people around there should all donate. And yeah. Kick in a little bit. Hastings to, gets his car fixed because he has money from somewhere. We, he has it, he loses it, and then he has it again. Yeah, we don't worry about where Hastings' money comes from. Yep. I don't think Poirot pays him. Do you no, think Poirot pays him? I think he's... Independently wealthy yes. from being a captain. I guess. But he knows a lot of rich people. He's commissioned. So maybe the family is rich. Maybe. Do you think Hastings is like the youngest son? Maybe. And that's why he doesn't have any responsibilities. Because like in the very first time that they meet that episode, Hastings is visiting rich people in the country and they all know him. Oh, yes. So. Well, and he was an officer. Yeah. So back then you didn't become an officer unless you could afford it. It this wasn't. This episode is out on 1st of April and the 8th of April we will have Triangle at Rhodes remixed. Pink Gin. Yeah, Pink Gin. And then on the 15th of April, Tax Day, we will have Problem at Sea remixed mm-hmm. with the little doll. <laughs> <laughs> My Some, hospital. Sometime after that, I would say, uh, we will have our live episode. Yeah. Um, so send us questions. Yes. and About whatever. The, the 8th is also the day that the sun goes away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you experience the uh, eclipse, I hope you have as much fun as we are planning on having. Yes. Yep. Hopefully it's not cloudy where you are. Yep. I'm hoping uh, after it's not that, cloudy here because there will be half a million people really upset. After that, we have the incredible theft. Those British people. They're so very British. They're so very British. Every Poirot, I know at least three lines by heart. The king, <laughs> the king of clubs, which is uh, the film industry and the weird neighbors. Mm-hmm. And Jap spends the entire episode looking for a tramp. Yes. <laughs> With the shoe, with the one shoe. <laughs> yes. And then uh, after that, uh, we will have the dream. Every episode is yep. good. Yep. So that, that'll that take us to the end of the first season, and then I'll go to Canada. So much fun. Yep. So much fun. Yep. Thank you all for listening. You all are amazing. You make us so amazed every single week. Absolutely. Keep putting recommendations on that reel. Yep. Keep looking at them. And we'll post another reel like that in two weeks or so. Yeah. And we have some new stuff to say that we're watching. Yep. And uh, we hope you enjoy them. Yes. And if you have a cold troll in your basement, do let us know. Do let us or know. Or maybe you are one. Maybe. And <laughs> listen to this podcast wow. while you're in the basement. <laughs> Bye, maniacs. Bye, maniacs. He just gets one day a month to be handsome. Just one. (laughs) Thanks for joining us on the Mystery Maniacs podcast. If you enjoyed our crazy podcast today, don't miss out on future episodes. Follow us on social media for updates, behind the scenes content, and exclusive sneak peeks. Subscribe, like, and share to spread the word. Bye, maniacs. Oh, it was Tig Nataro. I was like, Tig?